chapter 3, The Need of Semantics, the object indicated by the word and the word itself are one and the same in class because both are mental, imagined. First find out the meaning of words. You will find that they are simply mental images. These again are just your construction and concoctions. We must begin by examining the meaning of experience. Truth cannot be known before it is defined, before its meaning is understood. This does not mean indulging in speculation or forming opinions as to what may be true. It means inference based on life and experience in order to fix the goal of truth. It means that no important word should be received into the mind without asking of it what is felt in my mind when I use this word. Every man superimposes his own experience on others and imagines that their experience is like his. This is the fundamental fallacy of humanity everywhere. Thus, you have never superimposed another man's pain. You can know the meaning of pain only by looking into your own self-experience. Hence, your pain is personal experience, but your definition of the other man's pain is pure imagination. Hence, your interpretation of a man's description of his pain is not in correspondence with it, but only your imagination of it. That is why Vedanta ascribes such importance to the question, what is meant by a meaning? Such a query goes to the bottom of the matter, for the answer to it is that we are imagining the whole world, including our own self. It is all nothing but our idea, and it has nothing to do with the seer of it, the drig. Define carefully the meaning of each important term used as it arises. We must first define every important term we use, such as intellect, reason, time, eternity, consciousness, because it may carry one meaning to you and another to another man. Hence, definition must precede explanation. What do you mean by the word real? What are the tests and characteristics of reality? To reply that the external world is real alone is to ignore that this is based on the feeling of its reality. But you have a similar feeling in dream, hence it is useless to go by feeling. You must first find a definition that will hold, but people won't define. They want to go by feeling alone. Reality what we really are and what a thing really is, independent of man's conception of it. Truth Man's Conception of Reality Consciousness That which becomes aware of everything else in the world. Ego Personality or individuality as distinguished from the rest of the world. Reason That which resolves contradiction and unifies knowledge. Intellect that faculty of the human mind which detects fallacies and errors of man's reasoning in the waking state. Mind, the general sum of thoughts, imagination, feeling, etc. The word absolute is nonsensical, and Brahman should never be translated by it. Yet the academic philosophers make this mistake. Ultimately, there is only mind. If you think of the absolute, then you are thinking of yourself as one of the absolute as another, i.e. of duality. Hence, the absolute of philosophy is not the non-dual Brahman. The nearest English equivalent to the word Brahman is ultimate reality. The word one is not understood anywhere except in India Vedanta. One always means two when analyzed. Hence, the Upanishads are careful to show that they do not mean this monism, but one without a second, that is, Advita. A critical examination of concepts is required. As soon as a man utters the word God, we should ask what he means by that, and let him make the word clear. Without understanding the word we are using, of what use or value is our knowledge, when we inquire, we shall find how difficult it is to define exact words which are commonly and superficially used in knowledge, such as space, law, cause, truth, etc. Nay, we have to go deeper in philosophy and ascertain the meaning of meaning. A meaning is an idea, therefore it exists in the mind. Until you look into a man's mind, how can you prove what you mean by a word is what the other man means? How do you know that his meaning is the same as yours? For practical purpose of everyday life we do not trouble about these things, but for knowing the truth of things we have to inquire into their meaning. Is the term mind or consciousness or awareness a word? Yes. Has a word a meaning? Yes. What is a meaning? Something which you imagine. Then how do you know whether you imagined meaning is correct? You refer to your own experience to see whether it corresponds, but this means that you are referring to your thoughts only. 
You use the word move. The world is in motion. But what is it that makes it move? This is a semantic analysis of vital importance. What do you do when you try to understand this word or any other? What is meant when you say a thing has changed? Let us go to the root of the matter. The answer is that you cannot have a meaning for a word unless you have it in your own experience. The ideas of change in motion must originally come to you within yourself, otherwise it is meaningless. Hence we say philosophers must learn the meaning of meaning. This is the Indian term Anubhava within your experience. You see the world in yourself. Everything that you see in this world is in yourself. What is meant by a meaning? It is a thought. Hence a meaning is only a drasham, an object seen. This in turn implies a knower or a seer of it. Hence there are two. Hence it is not Advita. This is what I call the meaning of meaning, which must be got at. How do you get a meaning for words? What is meant by understanding a word? Each time you get only an idea. To use the words truth, reality, Brahman, is merely a form, an idea of them, that is a darsham, an object. Sages use such words only to help others rise from lower to higher steps, not to explain them. Each dual statement is used to demolish another, to point out the absurdity of another, as one thorn is used to pull out another. So the guru has to use those incorrect statements of truth to help the student rise to the final statements which, being non-dual, must be unspoken. Hence discussion and learning about truth are not useless, though they cannot yield finality, because they are riddled with duality, with objectiveness, i.e. contradiction. The best explanation is silence. So long as talk proceeds, the words are helpful, but still they are in duality. So long as we speak or write, we can never leave duality. Hence, the only genuine expression of truth is perfect silence. He who utters the word Brahman does not understand it, for in that moment he assigns a meaning to it, that is, an idea or imagination. The ultimate value of semantics is to show the futility of all words in the quest of truth, thus causing you to go beyond words into silence, where alone Brahman can be God. You must know that all books may be thrown in the dustbin because they are all ideas, but this does not mean they are useless. They can be used like one thorn picking out a second one that is embedded in the flesh. So words as expressive of ideas, although useless for knowing Brahman, are useful for removing ignorance and error which bar the way to such knowledge. We begin by inquiring into the external worlds. We inquire into the nature of internal worlds, that is, minds, ideas, thoughts, etc. We inquire into the meaning of words we use. Finally, we ask, what is that which is unchanging and unreal?